What's up design family and welcome back to another episode of Fit Design TV. So glad to have you back on the channel. On today's episode, we'll be looking at the different ways to tan and apply leather or color onto leather. Whether it's going to be on a jacket of yours or your favorite pair of loafers, there are a ton of different ways to apply color and tan leather. Each is going to have its own characteristics, advantages and disadvantages. So on today's quick episode, I'll be running you through the six most common tanning methods for leather so that you can have a better idea of which is going to be the right option for you, either as a consumer or as a leather goods designer. What's up design family and welcome to Fit Design TV. So glad to have you here. On this channel, we discuss all things sports, fashion, graphic design, manufacturing, and technology. We'll discuss key topics, answer pressing questions, and provide actionable steps on starting your own product line. If you're interested in any of the above topics, stick around. You're in for a good one. Contrary to popular belief, we don't actually get the finished leather directly from the animal. There's actually a process that we have to do in between, which is known as tanning. Tanning is the process by which we turn the skin of the animal that we source into the leather that we actually know and we can wear and we can turn into finished leather goods. This treatment actually involves the process of taking and stabilizing the protein structure of the skin, which ends up preventing bacteria, putrefaction, and possible coloration of the skin. And all of this turns the animal skin from the raw skin into the leather that we can actually use in the finished goods. The first and one of the most common options for tanning skin and turning it into leather is known as vegetable tanning. This process actually involves taking the tannins from the leaves and the barks of plants and having them bind to the collagen that's found in the skin or the hide of the animal. Here, the process usually takes between 40 to 60 days to complete and it's typically considered one of the more sustainable options when it comes to the tanning world. This is because it creates a more waterable, soluble solution and one that actually creates a process that's more resistant to the effects of bacteria. So all of these are major pluses in the benefit of vegetable tanning. Next up on our list is chrome tanning of leather. Here, this process is also known as wet blue and chrome tanning is one of the most common tanning methods that we see, typically because of how fast and cost efficient it is. This process uses a solution of chemicals, acids, and salts, and the process can actually be finished from start to finish in a single day. This process is incredibly fast and much quicker than vegetable tanning. Also, you have a ton of color options available and you can dye these really bright and vibrant colors with chrome tanning. Third up on our list is going to be Latigo tanning of leather. Here, this process is typically known as semi-vegetable tanning typically because it also combines the vegetable tanning processes and the chrome tanning processes. This type of tanning is usually applied to heavier weight hides, usually things like cow hides. Here, we actually start off with the chrome tanning method and then we move into vegetable tanning. Latigo tan leathers are usually much more durable and pliable than other types of leathers, which is a major plus in its favor. Fourth up on our list is going to be aldehyde tan leather. This type of tanning is typically referred to as wet white. And aldehyde tanning is usually used for the interiors of automobiles, especially if you have a leather interior, or for the creation of infants' shoes. This process involves the usage of glutaraldehyde or oxazolidine. These compounds are then added to the tans or the hides of the skins to turn them from skins into leathers. Number five on our list is going to be oil tanned leather. Oil tanning usually uses fish oils and other initial vegetable tanning processes that turn the skin from skin into leather. And usually the oil content in this process makes the leather extremely pliable and extremely soft. Because of this, we typically see oil tanning as a very popular tanning method when it comes to shoemaking. Last but not least on our list is going to be the rawhide process. Rawhides are actually made by soaking the skin in lime and stretching it out before it completely dries off. Because of the stiffness and brittleness of rawhides, these rawhides can be cut into cords and then actually made into shoelaces. That is pretty much it guys, that's a wrap on today's episode when it comes to the most common tanning methods for turning skin into leather. Quickly to recap, we discussed the six most common tanning methods and they are vegetable tanning, chrome tanning, latigo tanning, aldehyde tanning, we have oil tanning, and lastly we have the actual finished rawhide. 
By now, you should have a much better understanding of which is going to be characterized by each. That way, you can spot them in the wild when you're out, when you're kind of observing a leather good, and you have an idea of how each of these items is going to perform. Guys, if you enjoyed this episode, please let us know in the comments below what other topics you want to see us cover next. Also, consider smashing a massive thumbs up. It really does help us out, and it keeps us motivated to keep pumping out this content for you. Guys, thank you so much for tuning in to this episode of Fit Design TV. Until next episode, stay awesome.